Welcome back, everybody, to the Vikings franchise on Madden 23. We are in the 2024 season. It's week 11. We are 5-4 and four on the year. So if we do well these next few weeks, we're in the playoff hunt. If we lose the next few weeks, then things aren't looking so good. But we actually rank so much better in a lot of categories than I expected. Our defense has actually performed well this year. The offense is scoring points, but not as productive through the air as you would probably expect with a team with Justin Jefferson and we added T Higgins. Last episode did uh, make me think about something a little bit as this is how the season has gone for us. We just had a three game win streak snapped, but against Green Bay, we struggled in predictable fashion. They were dominant in the trenches. We were sacked five times total in this game. Three on Jalen Hurts, who was under constant pressure in this game. And looking at our receiving stat line, it's kind of an eye-opener. Because you have Quan Alexander as the leading receiver, nine catches. He's a slot receiver. Irv Smith, seven. Dalvin Cook, eight. That is a ton of targets and one to Greg Crossan. That is so many targets going to like the shortest depth-wise receivers on the field. And I think that we need to move Justin Jefferson inside so he can get those targets instead. It might hurt some of the big play upside, but we're not really a big play offense. And if we can just get Jefferson a few more catches a game, I think that would do much better for the offense, help us on third down. And we'd see more of Alexander then as a perimeter receiver. But this was just kind of an eye opener to see what a great defensive front can do to this offense. We don't have the offensive line to, you know, hold up and still throw downfield against these teams. And then we see how Jalen Hurts reacts to pressure. We've seen how Richard Hudick reacts to pressure as well. The issue here is that as a downfield receiver, Quan Alexander isn't a great deep route runner. His release is nothing special. So you almost wonder if KJ Hamler should get some of these reps instead. He's a better fit for the role. These are the games that we've had from Justin Jefferson so far, and I think that this signals a role change is probably a good thing. There aren't any big games here. I mean, some of these workloads are fine. You know, seven catches, 88 yards. You know, I want him to get 10 targets a game, but... Uh, I just think that for the offensive consistency, if we want to beat good teams with good fronts, we just got to make sure that Jefferson is there in the slot. So after uh, taking those five sacks in the previous game, we are getting this under siege uh, scenario. And this is what I saw in my Titans franchise pop up far too often. The offensive line has not been holding up very well. And it's frustrating to watch our offensive line get overwhelmed but then for our defensive line to not do the same i mean last game was one where i thought we could get pressure inside on rogers and if we could that would have made a difference but instead we got picked apart all game long so we are getting the increased pass protection boost this week but it will come at an expense of the running but it's the lions defense we should be able to run anyway we also have to choose our focus players for this week, and we have the prospect spotlight that we'll open with. And, man, I just haven't been impressed with these players, but maybe we have a good recommendation this time. A running back. All right, they're going to my weakness here. The running back position, Stephon Covington. Day two running back, Texas A&M. He's 6'1", 229 pounds. Covets ball security over everything else. Needs to work on concentration drops, but does fight for every inch while apparently protecting the football. Excels at creating yards after the catch. We got solid to good speed, solid to good acceleration, okay athlete, with good vision, good trucking, and maybe a little break tackle in there. I wouldn't mind getting a power back, but it's hard to see us spending a day two pick on it. So here's one player I want to put on the board to be a focus player this week, and this is Parker Bartell. He's a power rusher. We have a lot of speed rushers on this team, but power rusher is a scheme fit for what we have right now, and it's a skill set that I think we just need more of. 
and maybe part of our issue is relying more on the speed rushers and maybe the power rushers are more consistent or something i haven't really uh looked into that too deep but either way bartel's a player that should be on our radar and we could use the information I might also look more into Lane Quincy just because he looks like a potential really high upside lineman and a lot of these players will have like really good power and then really bad finesse like D or F. At least his is a C for unblock finesse and there are a lot of A grades in here. And the last player I think will be Julian Kennedy. He's 6'6", 306. A power rusher inside, I just want more clarity on the block shed. But it looks like he's just a really strong player. Just want to see if he's also good against the run. With A tackling, you hope so that that block shed ends up being a B. And we can attempt to talk to Justin Jefferson again about getting this long-term deal done. I think the offer has come up a little bit. We increase the signing bonus even more. The cap hits that this could create are massive for a non-quarterback. We'll make the offer. And we got a deal done! Wow! I wasn't expecting that one to actually work. We got a deal with Justin Jefferson, which leaves the franchise tag open for maybe a Daniil Hunter tag and trade. That was kind of some extra motivation to get a deal done there, because letting him walk for nothing obviously feels bad. This game doesn't have compensatory picks, even though it's 2022. But the way I look at it, it's not likely we're going to be spending a lot on the quarterback position for the duration of this contract, while well, Jefferson is still in his 20s. So we don't get the standard cap relief because we're paying a receiver, you know, about $30 million a year toward the cap. But at the end of the day, we can keep one of the best receivers in the NFL in Minnesota. That was easier than I thought it would be. But it's still a massive contract. Five years, 161 million is the actual extension. That would be an NFL record in terms of total contract value to a receiver. This year, uh, Devontae Adams signed for 140 million at 28 million dollars a year. Tyreek Hill gets 30 a year, and Jefferson is north of that. This is 32.2 million dollars a season. Keep in mind, we're a couple years in the future, so the salary cap has also gone up. All right, time to get to some games today. Justin Jefferson, newly paid, now in the slot again. How does he celebrate that new contract against Detroit? 42 points from the Vikings. This is actually the same exact score that we had two weeks ago the last time we won. 42-28. Howie Thompson and Jalen Hurts going back and forth. And Richard Hudick just keeps popping up to get, like, a couple of throws in. He gets a touchdown here as Jalen Hurts plays excellent. 27-34 in the air. Only two sacks allowed, two touchdowns. So we don't do a great job on the ground in this game. But we were busy throwing the football. And Brandon Beasley, he had a good game against us. Almost 100 yards. And then Justin Jefferson, five catches, 80 yards. Of course, we want some more of those big games, but we scored 42 without him getting there. Quan Alexander still had more catches. Herb Smith did as well. We really spread the ball around, including to our number four and five receivers in this game. Defensively, a lot of tackles for Keyshawn Oldham, and then a sack for Daniil Hunter. And the Vikings moved to six and three. So what's the result then of allowing two sacks after the under siege scenario? Jalen Hurts is pleased to bounce back from last week's sack fest, plus five morale. After allowing zero sacks, well, we allowed two, but the offensive line still gets a boost. Jalen Hurts, plus five morale. And now we get Arizona. There is an injury coming out of that week, and given we had all of our receivers play... I wonder if this could be T. Higgins. No, Andrew Booth. That is a fractured shoulder blade. He will miss nine games. And we're going to have to place him on injured reserve. That is a brutal injury here at this stage of the season. 
as we have seven games to go and he wouldn't be eligible to return until the NFC Championship game then in that case. So how does the corner depth look then? Obviously, Cam Dantzler has been our guy, but there's Noah Igbenogany, who's been mainly a slot corner and probably stays in that role. We can play Benjamin St. Juiced. We can play a Caleb Evans. Two big corners. St. Juiced probably a bit better playing physical, higher press, higher tackling, zone coverage. I think he becomes the two if we don't make a move. And unless there was like a really good veteran available in the 80 range, I don't think I'll make a signing. AJ Boye. Yeah, I think that we will probably stick with St. Juiced. Trey Flowers would also be somewhat intriguing here, but I think the ratings are more or less the same. I'd rather play a, a younger player that uh, can maybe carve out a role for us going forward. So I've traded for two corners in this series, and they're now going to be playing a lot of snaps. When I traded for St. Juiced, I thought, you know, maybe we'll play him. It didn't really work out because Dantzler and Booth became the two outside guys. Igbenogany was traded for to be the slot. But now, Benjamin St. Juiced, who went to college in Minnesota. He's now going to be our number two, and I'm excited to see if his height and physicality can replace Andrew Booth sufficiently. We might as well elevate Barry Davidson then, get another cornerback on the roster, mainly because at 70 overall, there's a good chance he could get signed away, but I don't think he'll play. I was actually able to get Tariq Woolen on our practice squad. He was a free agent, and obviously he's doing some great things in real life. But uh, in Madden, he just needs a little time. There's a lot of potential with him. So now we get the trench boost scenario playing out as we get ready to take on the Arizona Cardinals. You have to be excited about the offensive line's ability to keep the quarterback clean. And now we're going to get like an XP reward potentially if we can protect Jalen Hurts against the Arizona Cardinals. Upgrading the offensive line should definitely help. Here's J.D. McGraw, and we know that he's going to have at least superstar development. Oh, there it is. The superstar rookie right guard out of USC. I identified him really early in the draft process, made him a second round pick, and this has been a home run for us. But Richard Hudick, we don't know yet about our first round pick. I know there's a lot of people that don't like that he's not playing. I get it. And typically, I've always just played the rookie quarterbacks and kind of just dealt with whatever happens. We're going a different route here in this season with the Vikings. I think I'm okay going with some of the improviser stuff here. Like, I want him to be able to play well under pressure. And maybe improviser helps. Throw on the run. You still get accuracy. I mean... Hard to predict sometimes what's actually going to happen with some of these upgrades. And then we got KJ Hamler, and I just talked about him potentially playing more snaps. And that release and catching traffic, those are two ratings I want to see get stronger. Hopefully we get lucky on this upgrade. And we did get that release up. I'm going uh, field general here on Brian Osamoa. Definitely got out of position at least uh, one egregious time in that Packer game. Something to keep an eye on here with our third down uh, pass defense. Here we go. Cardinals and the Vikings today with a chance for us to move to 7-4, and four, which would put us in a really good position in this late season playoff push. Arizona, meanwhile... I believe they are 5-4 on the season, trying to stay in it. And this is a big game for both squads. Primetime football here with the Vikings and the Cardinals. Let's get underway. It'll be Arizona on defense, it looks like. So, the Vikings with Justin Jefferson playing more in the slot. I'm interested in how the offense looks. And there's a lot of incentive for not allowing sacks in this game. We'll run on first down. A nice cut from Dalvin Cook. He gets five yards. For Arizona, there's still Kyler Murray at quarterback, James Conner at running back. 
DeAndre Hopkins, Rondale Moore remain the top two receivers with Daniel Simmons and Michael Bandy behind them. Dawson Knox is the tight end. The offensive line, really nothing special. They're starting Daryl Williams at center, who's at 56 overall. If we don't push him around today, I don't know what I'm going to do. Defensively, man, I'm not impressed with their defensive front. Zaven Collins is there. Zadarius Smith, so they do have one legit pass rusher. They got a couple players in the secondary with Thompson, Baker, and uh, Byron Murphy. But, you know, on paper, it would be like a good Dalvin Cook game, good game for our front seven, and I, I like this whole matchup for us on paper. Jalen Hurts now on second down. Looks to throw for the first time. There's a catch! And it's hauled in by Quan Alexander on the crossing pattern. I think I just saw that Odell Beckham is on the Patriots down below. Here's second down for Jalen Hurts across the middle. And we've had two throws go to uh, Quan Alexander on routes you would expect out of the slot. Third down and one. We'll keep it in the air and throw it. Oh, come on. Why doesn't Madden have any sideline awareness? True sideline awareness. Adjust the route. Do the right thing on the sideline. Oh, they messed up. The Cardinals made a mistake. They were off sides, and the Vikings have their drive extended, thankfully. Dalvin. He makes a man miss, and he will get it inside the 35. 49 points down below for Buffalo. Big day for them. Play fake for Jalen Hurts. He wants to take off and runs right into the pressure. And that's the first sack of the day. Two receivers right, one left. To the air on third and seven. Hurts wants to take off. He will have the first down yardage. What? What's the spotting on that slide? At least we're going for it. We toss it. Dalvin... Got it, and more down inside the 25. Looking to throw on first down. Hurts, he gets away and runs it ahead to the 16-yard line. I wonder how much Jalen Hurts is skewing our rushing stats. Because I'm guessing that just our traditional running game is nothing more than average. It'll be Dalvin on second down. He gets enough. Those first couple yards should be there all day for us. This needs to be a heavy Dalvin game. This one's caught by Higgins inside the five, and the Vikings have it goal to go. Dalvin's tired but stays in the game on first down. He will run it and does not get in. Still no Chase Edmonds on this possession. And Dalvin will fight his way down to the one. I guess he didn't break the plane there. He's still in there, man. Auto subs just can't help you one bit. Third and goal. Dalvin. Oh, come on. This opening drive is taking a toll on me, I'm telling you. Fourth and goal from the one. Just get in the end zone. It is not going to happen. Ty Chandler gets stuffed in the backfield. That drive... Oh my god. Imagine going on a 16 play drive and not scoring. Vikings turn it over on downs. Here's Kyler Murray in his own end zone. Rolling away from pressure and he throws it away. I do have Dion Robinson getting more snaps here as a rush tackle over Deron Payne. I want to see the rookie, especially in this matchup. Second and 10. Murray spins and throws it complete. And that should be enough for a first down and some breathing room. Here's first down. And Murray's got New Hopkins wide open across the middle. And that's an area of the field where I'm getting really tired of getting picked apart. Nobody home there. I'm just going to have to be watching these linebackers at all times. We got Oldham there in the middle on first down as Murray evades the blitz and throws a nice ball to the outside. 
38 yard line, here's some motion and they flip it ahead. That's a first down. Nice play calling for Arizona. As opposed to the five yard hitches and receiver screens we're used to seeing from Cliff Kingsbury. Run of the head, it's James Conner falling ahead for a gain of three. We'll send pressure from the secondary and down goes Kyler Murray. It's Noah Igbenogany on the slot blitz. And the Vikings force a third and long. That's the play we tried to make against Aaron Rodgers and failed every time we attempted. Third and 15, blitzing again. Murray throws and it's caught. But shy of the marker is Hopkins. Dalvin. In a pile on first down, he gets a couple yards, so we're definitely feeding him. He's got eight carries, but so many of them were when he was so tired on that last possession. He'll get it to uh, Dalvin. He runs into uh, somebody and falls over, so it's third down. Hurts lobbing downfield for Higgins. It's tipped up and incomplete. The rebound was just a little too far away. Not the start I was hoping for from this Minnesota offense. And Arizona takes over. And they immediately go three and out and have the field goal blocked. Arizona gives us the football excellent field position. But we go three and out. And the offense hasn't done anything. We're back into this scoreless game here in the second quarter. It's Kyler on a keeper. And he won't go far running into Brian Osamoa. 13 passes to three runs so far for Arizona. And now on second down, that's wide open and easy first down. Going to the tight end, Dawson Knox. Now at our 33-yard line, Kyler under pressure. He throws it off the mark. Nice to see some interior pass rush there. That's always refreshing to get. 10 of 15 passing now is Murray. Setting up a screen, and James Conner couldn't get out there. The screen game has been so busted here on the uh, next-gen gameplay. Third and ten now. Blitz coming again. Murray spins, and he's off the mark. I think we're blitzing a little too much on third down like that, especially sending from the secondary. Field goal try. That kick is good. Cardinals on the board first. And now it's time for the Vikings to take over. Let's see if we can get those first points. Shouldn't be this difficult. Hertz looks left and dumps it off to Greg Crossan. Blitz coming. Hertz sees it but cannot escape. And he gets sacked by Zaven Collins. I don't think we're getting a big XP reward from our uh, offensive line play in this game. Although that was just an unblocked blitz. Hertz heaves it deep, and it's incomplete in the double coverage. We have not seen the Jefferson targets as I was expecting. It's still going to Alexander. I don't think we're going to see very many points scored in this game, but Arizona did just get a nice third down conversion. They take it down into field goal range. And let's see how they finish this drive. First half has been a rough one here for Minnesota. All the momentum on the Arizona side. From the empty look, it's a quick pass to Knox. We don't let him get the first. Third down. They'll keep it in the air, and it's James Conner for a first down and more. Down to the seven. Arizona, three receivers on the field on first down, and Murray's got the touchdown to Rondale Moore. Every time he plays the Vikings, he scores a touchdown. And now it's 9 to nothing, and we've looked really flat. This seems like a pretty big possession here for the offense. Screen for Dalvin to start things, and that did not work. Arizona is set to get the ball after half. 
So this is kind of a big possession. What are you doing? It's intercepted by Zaven Collins, who's having a huge game. He has a deflection, a sack, and now an interception that was thrown right to him. I don't know what Jalen Hurts was thinking on this play. Jefferson's on the ground. It was supposed to go to Dalvin. And Arizona, they just scored. They have the ball now, and they're getting the ball after half. This has a chance to go very wrong for us. Murray, 60 seconds to go, needs to extend things. And he's intercepted! Right back to the Vikings, it's Lewis Seen. What a break. We needed that one. All right, Jalen Hurts do better this time. He scrambles out and decides to run it past Saban Collins. To the air on first down. He sacked again this time. It is Zadarius Smith for a loss of 10. We've taken three first half sacks. We're not getting anything. I guess we're still going to throw it here. And it's finally Justin Jefferson for six yards. Why do we burn a timeout there? It's a little over aggressive here after the first catch by Jefferson. Just to run a stretch. And we are on all pro. I was wondering because I did get like kicked off the servers at one point there in the uh, pregame stuff. But no, I have it on all pro the way it's supposed to be. We're just playing like trash right now. Cardinals 28 seconds to go. Still a chance to maybe get three. Away from sweat but incomplete. 22 seconds to go. They swing it out to James Conner and he's wrapped up. At least I think we'll keep them from doing anything more before halftime. But man, the Richard Hudick calls are going to be a little loud after that first half. That really couldn't have gone a whole lot worse for the Vikings offense. But we'll see in the second half if anything begins to turn around. I'm still shocked at the Jefferson usage. I thought the slot change there would make uh, a noticeable difference. And he has one catch for six yards. So the defense put into a tough spot here. They've got to come up with a stop again. Arizona starts the second half off against the five-man pressure. And the pass is caught. That is Dawson Knox. On a design draw, it's Kyler Murray inside for a first down nearly. He gets nine. Now this is a full house look. And Murray's going to run again. This time he does get the first down. Running now with James Conner in this play works as well. Out to the 36 of Minnesota. Very nice start to the possession for the Cardinals who keep it on the ground. And this is a shift for the offense to focus on the running game, but it's working. A four-man rush. Murray, he's in trouble, gets away from Daniil, and the pass is incomplete. Third down, trying to get this defense off the field for a bit. Cardinals have time. Murray, sideline. It's caught by Connor, but he is shy of the marker. All things considered, the defense is hanging in there. And the field goal try is up and through as the Cardinals make it 13-0. We need something on this drive. Can the Vikings go get points? Jalen Hurts off his spot, running left. Sliding down after a short pickup of two. Quick pass hauled in. There's Jefferson. It is a short gain once again. But I just don't feel confident on third down the way we've played today. We need just four yards, though. It's very doable. Cardinals blitz picked up Dalvin. First down going to Herb Smith. Throw it to Jefferson. First and ten. We do look to throw across the middle. Hauled in. Justin Jefferson, there's the play we've been waiting on. 
To the air once again. Get it in the hands of Jefferson. Third time on the drive. Second down. Jalen throwing on the move. Got Jefferson again. And this time he's inside the 15. That was a strange throw, but it got there. Look what happens when you throw it to Justin Jefferson. Who would have thought this could work so well? Now he's in the backfield on first down. And Hertz has an open man. There is Higgins. Once again, things don't look good for Jalen Hurts. We start to think about, like, all right, what does Hudick have? Should we get him in the game? And it's at that moment Hertz comes back to play some of his best football. It's third and two. We need the touchdown. We look to throw it. Hertz has time, and that's caught for the touchdown by Irv Smith. Well protected. He had plenty of time with Jefferson not getting a clean release out of the backfield. And that's a nice ball right there. Vikings finally on the board. So now it's only a six-point game. Arizona started this drive strong, and James Conner runs again, this time not for much. From the 49, Kyler back to pass. Chased by Daniil. This pass is hauled in. All right, don't get too aggressive here. Third and six. Do not give up the middle for free. Murray back to pass. He spins, and it's intercepted! Right back to Minnesota. This is Montez Sweat down the sideline. Touchdown! And the Vikings have taken their first lead of this game. They've only played well for about three minutes, but it's enough time to go and take this lead. And now the Vikings are in the driver's seat. That's why we bring in Montez Sweat for the pick sixes. We are getting so fortunate right now. Almost intercepted by Dantzler. Kyler is just... Throwing it anywhere without any care. Now he's going to throw it to Rondale Moore, and this time it worked. You know, it really begs the question, though. Was Kyler maybe playing a little too much Modern Warfare 2 before this game got underway? Maybe at halftime he snuck in a free-for-all or something. Nice pass out to James Conner. That's a design draw, and Kyler gets sandwiched. It's a loss of one. On second down, Murray's complete on the outside. Ooh, that didn't get anything. Maybe he didn't catch that cleanly. Third down now for Arizona. It's a four-man rush. Murray off his back foot, looks deep, and it's broken up for Rondale Moore. That is Dantzler on the coverage. How far can they pin us here? That's bouncing inside the 10. And it's going to rest at around the 2-yard line. As the Vikings will have a long way to go on this drive. Let's see if the offense can put together more than one solid possession today. We're in our own end zone right now. Looking to throw out of it. Jalen, off balance. What are you doing? Cardinals take the lead on a pick six by Josie Jewell. Are you kidding me? What are these quarterbacks doing? So Arizona just had a holding call. And they're going for two still, even from the 12-yard line. And they're running it because I don't think the game realizes they're just calling their two-point plays. They're not taking into account that you might have had a penalty that backed you up. So that is uh, a weird situation there. The Richard Hudick fans are going to have a lot to say, especially if we don't win this game. Dalvin up the right side, fighting for every inch. But he just hasn't gotten going the way you expected today, the way I expected anyway. I see the mismatch in the trenches, or at least an even matchup, but I think Dalvin can go have some big runs. Hasn't worked that way. Here comes JJ. It's Dalvin that's more like it. First down with a jump to the outside. 
Jalen off his spot. He can outrun the defense. He's good at this. First down, Vikings. 9.30 to go in this ball game. And it's Jefferson on the handoff. Not exactly the most effective way to get him the football. 39 yards out now for Minnesota. Hurts dumps it. There's Higgins. He gets the first down. Unfortunately, T. Higgins hasn't come with more of a downfield element for this offense. Part of what I'm thinking is that Hudick might be more of a risk taker downfield. Dalvin inside. Breaking tackles down to the 12. The late surge for Dalvin Cook in this ballgame. But I do wonder if Hudick would be attacking defenses more downfield and getting more of those big plays the offense has missed. Dalvin carries again, breaks the tackle, has the ball knocked out, and Arizona is on it! This game, man! Why is it so accurate to Viking football? They stood him up, and it gets punched out by Buda Baker. Come on. I'm not happy about any of this. Five-point game, Arizona football. Kyler. He's got time outside. Oh! It's intercepted! What a play by Dantzler! No way! How did he get his feet in? That was a terrible throw by Kyler. What a play by Cam Dantzler! Oh my goodness. Thank you. The Vikings take over at the 21. Chase Edmonds is in the game right now at running back. Hurts to throw. On the outside, not there for Jefferson. Dantzler has been so good in this series, it's unbelievable. Jalen Hurts on second down. Oh boy. He's going to make it work though. Sliding down shy of the marker. This game is something else. Third and one, Jefferson. First down and goal, Minnesota. We're going to have to win ugly today. It's just what we need right now. Vikings eight yards out. T. Higgins on the handoff. Maybe gets about two. Everybody in tight on second down. Hurts looking short again. We're really chipping away here. Two yards at a time. Third and goal. We need the touchdown. And we are going to throw it. Hurts throws. He's got him. Touchdown. It's Irv Smith. He scored again. His second to the game. And the Vikings pull ahead with six minutes to play. This has been a very stressful game. I just want to win. A two-point conversion would help. Quan Alexander alone there at the top. Hertz doesn't have JJ. He's got him open though. T. Higgins makes the catch. And the Vikings go up three. As soon as you even start to think about not having Jalen Hurts play. He does his best. A good return. Oh, he slowed him down. Oh, thank you. But they returned it across midfield. That was so nice. He had a perfect lane there and then just uh, an unlucky collision there. Arizona at the 48. If this game goes to overtime, that pass is hauled in by Rondale Moore. Across the middle, and that's DeAndre Hopkins down to the 34. A draw once again. Murray up the middle. He has good yardage and takes it to the 27. Tight throw and it's caught, but really good coverage. And it's third down and short. Does Arizona keep it on the ground this time? James Conner will not get the football here. It's a first down instead to the 20. And we are down to 346. This is getting interesting. Arizona needs three to tie the game. 
Murray out of the pistol. This is Connor. Right side with room. Inside the 10 and down to the 6. With Lewis seen shaken up on the play for the Vikings. And Arizona looks to take the lead rather than settle for a tie. They run it. Connor denied by Oldham. Here comes Rondale. They get it to Connor. And the Vikings stuff him again. I like that whole uh, design though with Rondale coming across. Third and goal. No receivers in the game. It's a fake. Kyler. It's incomplete. He missed an open receiver. Threw it to his tight end. And that's where the coverage was. He has his fullback leaking out there and he missed him. Fourth and goal Arizona. And they will bring out the field goal team. Thankfully. Chip shot. It is good. And now the Vikings look to break the tie with under three to go. Returnable. Kane Wongwu. Not much of a return there. Vikings have plenty of time, though, to go and get three points. Jalen Hurts trying to get us our seventh win on the year. A lot on the line here in this game. Vikings keep it on the ground. Dalvin does not get much. Dalvin again on second down. He breaks a tackle. Gets the first down. Fighting his way down to the 38-yard line. So it is becoming a really good Dalvin game after all. It just took a while to get it going. Most of his yardage has been here in the fourth quarter. 159 left to go. Hertz has Jefferson for a gain of eight. Jalen on second down. Extending off his back foot. What are you doing? It is intercepted. And Arizona has it at the 50. Isaiah Rogers, who had the really good kickoff return, just intercepted the third pass from Jalen Hurts. What is it? These quarterbacks in this game are not playing good at all. Seven turnovers now in this game total. Arizona has it at midfield. Kyler spinning in trouble off his back foot and incomplete. Kyler lobbing downfield now and it's broken up by Dantzler to set up third and ten. Kyler setting up a screen. Long way to go. Connor is not going to get it. And I don't have an option right now to back out and try to make like a depth chart change if I wanted to put in Richard Hudick. We have this uh, super sim bug where I can't back out. I think in this instance it would be interesting as that punt is terrible. Thank you. But Jalen Hurts is in there. He still has a chance to go and get us a win. He'll swing it out to Dalvin Cook and Zayvon Collins has been money. Overtime approaches with 44 seconds to go. Jefferson from the backfield shoves away Buda Baker and still doesn't go anywhere. I hope we don't really screw this up here. We are running the play clock down a little bit, but not all the way. I think we're just going to overtime now. Don't punt it. All right, overtime with the Vikings and Cardinals in the most stressful game of the season. Who's getting the ball first? Who has the first chance to throw another interception? The Cardinals have won the toss and will receive. This is returnable from the end zone. But this time, we have much better kick coverage. Arizona has the first chance. A touchdown wins it for the cards. Four-man rush. Murray chased by Hunter. He gets sacked by Montez Sweat. And the Vikings pass rush comes up with another big play. 
I've actually been impressed with our pass rush in this game, at least on the edge. Murray on second and 22. He throws complete. Rondale Moore to the 25. Sets up a third and seven. They go split backfield. Vikings looking for a three and out. They motion out one running back. Kyler. Condensed. It's a fumble. Recovered by Asamoa. And the Vikings take over in field goal range. He tried to throw this ball. But he, he got hit, and I think that might have been the rookie, and it was! It was Dion Robinson! So, it's a rare instance where the ball flies forward like that, but it's not ruled a forward pass. We do not bring out the field goal team immediately for a 45-yard try, but please, no passes. No throwing of the ball. This is Dalvin Cook. We get... Two yards closer. Dalvin hit by Collins and he gets nothing. Third down Vikings. Inside zone. That's all you need here. It's a throw. Jalen Hurts back to pass. He's going to run for it. And the ball's knocked out. Arizona's got it again. This game cannot be good for my health. Nine turnovers in this game and a turnover on downs. Basically 10 turnovers and then a blocked field goal. 5.52 to go. This game can mercifully come to an end in five and a half minutes. It's James Conner to the right side. He doesn't get much. Under five to play. Murray in trouble. He slings it with a penalty marker down. That is going to be a roughing the passer. And Arizona is going to get 15 here tacked on. They're at our 40. Field goal range right ahead of them. As James Conner will lose three. 423 left to go. We blitz Murray and he throws it across the middle to Rondale Moore. First down. Rondale is destroying us. We should have had this game won. Dion Robinson made the play. James Conner runs it to the right. From here, it's a 40-yard field goal try. 326 left to go. They motion across. Conner runs left. Nicely played. And they'll try the field goal on third down. Why are they so much smarter than us? Why didn't we kick a field goal on third down? What's this camera? All right. For the win. 37 yards, left hash. Got it away cleanly. And the kick is good. Arizona wins this game. And I'm not going to hear the end of it. What a disaster. Cliff Kingsbury, I can't believe you got a win out of this game. Somebody had to win, though. What a complete disaster of a game. 25-22. We could have attempted a field goal right here. It would have been 43 yards. Or just run inside zone. But no, we have to throw it. And you don't even throw it to Herb Smith. Jefferson there up the seam too. Come on. And Jalen Hurts tries to make it happen with his legs. And once he didn't go down immediately, I knew this was going to be bad. Oh, look at the fist. Look at the fist. Coming from a mile away. To punch it out. This should have been the play that won us the game. Dion Robinson creates the pressure. What the heck happened here? Oh, he tried to... It hit off Connor's back and flew forward. It's kind of a physics bug there. And it should have won us the game. 
Three interceptions for both quarterbacks in this game. 80 pass attempts. Four and a half yards in attempt here for Jalen Hurts. 86 yards for Dalvin Cook on the ground. We got it to Jefferson a lot there in the second half. But I still was not a fan of the way we threw the ball in this game. Three sacks. Three picks. Defense did everything they had to do. Yep, the offensive line wasn't as good in this game. And it didn't lead to like a heavy workload for Justin Jefferson until late in the game. We get no XP from that performance. San Francisco is only 4-7 and seven on the season. And we are set to meet with them in our next game. Got the Cowboys, the Bears, the Packers coming up. Right now at 6-5, and five, if the season ended right now, we would be a playoff team as the sixth seed. But certainly, after the way last game went, there will be a lot of people saying that it's time to start Richard Hudick. Could it be time to make a change at quarterback? Jalen Hurts did not play well and hasn't uh, been all that consistent in a lot of these watched games we've had lately. The Bills game was fantastic but we've played some games since then it hasn't gone as well Packer game was a struggle today's game was an interception fest I'm not sure the bad goes away playing Richard Hudick is all because he's looked a bit reckless as well and in that last game we saw him play his first throw basically should have been intercepted but it didn't so he got to throw like six more and look good on those passes I think one of the main arguments here would be that perhaps Hudick is more likely to throw downfield because we know Hertz isn't really going to do it very much we don't know about Hudick but back in those preseason games prior to the draft reset he did show that tendency that is the one thing I'm wondering here is would Hudick add big play passes to this offense because that feels like something we're missing Hertz has had some good games he's had some bad games do we consider making the change now T Higgins has 633 yards a long of 32 Jefferson a long of 26 on 630 yards I'll have to make a decision before we play our next game against San Francisco and we have six games to go in the season we're six and five right now really close to being seven and four and that would have felt really good to be seven and four at this stage but leave your thoughts down below in the comment section on what we should do next episode please leave a like if you enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel i will see you all in the next episode have a great day